Oh, hi guys. Sorry about that delay. I forgot to hit go live. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Hi everyone. I'm Shannon here for Hero Arts. Welcome to today's <laughs> make along. I had the whole like timer up and everything, but I didn't actually hit go live. So you missed all that. And I've been on air for not on air for five minutes, but thought I was on air for five minutes. So yay. I'm sure now you can hear me. <laughs> Yay. Hi, Michelle. Okay, great, 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 great. People can hear me now. Wow. So no one could hear me because I wasn't going live. Okay, great. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a wonderful Sunday. Today we are going to be working with the October kit. Um, I love this kit because it's kind of like one of the scene builder kits. Um, not so much layering, but still a lot of elements that you can kind of... Um, Oh, I wouldn't say stack, but you can kind of have some items in the foreground, some items in the background, and create a whole scene. Hi, thanks for joining for the first time. Um, there are still some of this October kit still available. Um, so if you do, uh, if you don't have this kit yet and you're interested, there still are some available. You can see here's the stamp set. And then there's a ton of dies. I can't even fit them all onto this magnetic sheet. There's so many. And what I really want to point out is there's dies for the sentiments, which I made a big mistake in the write-up. There is a write-up for today's make-along, which lists the supplies and instructions. And I didn't make a mistake in the instructions because I forgot about the dies that cut out the sentiments. So we have this one will cut out Merry Christmas. This is Tis the Season. We're going to use that today. This one says... Happy holidays. I know, not enough time to work with it. I know, Gail. This one is though, these, um, hi, Mindy. These, um, this kit in particular, I think does allow you to create cards quickly um, because it's just a pretty quick scene builder set. So pretty good one. And this is the card we're gonna make today. If you didn't see, we're gonna create this um, Christmas scene with um, basically a, one tone. I used red, which is a little a little unusual, at least for a scene, but this would be beautiful with blue cardstock or green cardstock. There's lots of pretty variations you can make of this. You could even um, simplify the scene if you wanted to. Uh, there's just, I think this is a really pretty simple card. I made it, I, I always make things a little bit more complicated. So I added a lot of extra images, but even if you just did that right there, that would be gorgeous. Okay. So I'm going to try, I'm going to attempt to get my face out of here. And so we can just focus on me creating this card. So give me a second here to change the view. All right, let me know if you can hear me. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. You, Cindy, you just made yours in blue. Yep, blue would be beautiful. I just felt like I was making, okay, great. Thank you, Michelle. I just felt like I was making a lot of blue Christmas cards and I just wanted to change the palette to red. But again, this card would be beautiful in blue. Okay, great, awesome. Thank you guys for letting me know. Okay, so we're gonna get started on this card. The very first thing we're gonna do is actually kind of create this background. And because I'm using red, I'm gonna start with my red panel. Now, if you wanna use a different color cardstock, you totally, please make it your own. I'm using cherry cardstock from Hero Arts. It's a beautiful red color. Purple, Michelle, that's a great idea. I didn't even think about purple. Purple's one of those colors that I forget about sometimes. It's not my go-to color. Sorry, Libby, but it's just not one of my go-to colors. Hello from Mississippi. All right, I'm gonna grab this here. Now you could do your whole card base out of your colored cardstock, but I'm going to be thrifty and save my colored cardstock and just cut a panel and then I'll glue it onto my card base layer later. But I'm gonna be a little thrifty that way. Baby color, exactly. Hello from Florida, hello.
first thing I'm going to do is actually, I think I'm going to stamp my scene first. Yeah, that's what I do first. I'm trying to remember the instructions. <laughs> I, I just wrote them, but I forgot. I'm going to stamp my um, Christmas village first. So I'm going to grab the stamp set and I'm going to do this little Santa village here, that image. Hello, Susan. Extra sticky. Pull that guy off. So cute. We're going to do it about, oh, let me grab my original here. Not halfway, but, uh, and not quite a third. About like there. So maybe, maybe almost like the tops of the buildings are just below halfway. Oh, nice. You got give freebies. Awesome. Center it. I like how it's just a little bit smaller than the card front. Just a, just a tad. So I don't have to use any spacers or anything. Pick it up and we're just going to stamp it in some embossing watermark ink. But before I do that, I am going to put down some anti side powder. Freebies are always the best, aren't they? So exciting when you get something you didn't expect. <laughs> my sister, um, my sister and myself included, I can't say I'm not one of these people, but I love grab bags. Do you guys love getting, like, you? do you love grab bags? I love that thrill of not knowing what it is. <laughs> Ultimately, I don't like everything that's in there, but I'm so excited at the prospect of something amazing being in that grab bag that I'll buy it every time. Like, I'm a sucker for grab bags. One time we went to like a, not like, I guess a boutique, like a, a soap boutique. And we we bought like every grab bag they had there. <laughs> so I love grab bags. I love those little unexpected, although grab bags are not typically freebies, but it's still exciting that not knowing what you're going to get. Okay. I'm going to ink this a couple times just to make sure I got plenty of embossing ink on this image. There is a lot of heat embossing in today's card. You know what? I need to grab my scrubby block here. Ooh, stuffed peppers. Yum. I love that. That's something I didn't like as a kid, and now I'm as an adult, I love stuffed peppers. I even make a stuffed pepper soup sometimes. Because I'm a, I love soups. My husband. Not so much. Me, I love them. <laughs> it's like one pot and all the, everything you need in your meal is there. All your vegetables, you know, and all your meat, your proteins, all in one pot. Let me grab my gold heat embossing or gold embossing powder. And I'm just going to dip this in. Oh, that turned out perfect. Perfect, perfect. No flat, no flyaways, nothing. Mmm, I love tomato or potato soup. Cowboy stew sounds good too. Ooh, and butternut. I have a good butternut squash, squash soup too. Yes, I love soups. And this, we're in soup weather now. Woohoo! Even though I am, I'm in Arizona where it's really hot and I'll still eat soups in the summer. <laughs> I love them so much. Stuffed red and green peppers with ground beef. Yum, exactly. With cheese. Well, that sounds good. I We didn't have it with cheese growing up. I'm going to quickly now color the scene a little bit. Looks about the same. I think I stamped it in about the same spot. For some reason, it looks a lot lower right now. <laughs> I'm going to color my scene with some Copic markers. Here they are. I've got three shades picked out. It's probably a little bit excessive, 
I'm going to start with my lightest red, which is R27. And I'm going to color the roofs. Um, and a little bit of the ground. So we'll start there together. And I'll hold it up so you can see, hopefully. But I'm going to color pretty much the whole roofs. Now, if you get a little, you're going to try to avoid getting coloring the um, heat embossing. But if you do get a little bit on there, you can kind of clean it up with your colorless blender. So you, there is a way to kind of clean it. Color all these little roofs here. Just this a little extra step, but it does kind of ground the scene, ground the images a little bit better. It makes it easier for the eye to kind of tell what it is you're looking at, kind of separate the, the houses from the trees and everything. Is crimson red similar to lumberjack plaid? You know what? I don't have lumberjack plaid, so I'm not sure. Hi, Rosie. I'm not totally sure. Maybe somebody else out there who's has both. But I don't know. That's a great question. I can show you what my swatch of crimson red looks like, or crimson, if that helps. This is crimson right here. Not sure if that's super helpful without or <laughs> without the lumberjack plaid next to it. Thank you, Lori. So now I'm just coloring along the ground um, right here with my lightest red. Now this is the most, this little scene here is the most Copic coloring we do to this card. So if you don't like to really Copic color, there's not too much on this, just a little bit. Again, like I said, just to kind of define the buildings and add a little interest because a lot of this card is a lot of gold heat embossing and that can get kind of, um, I feel like a little overwhelming. So this kind of breaks it up a little bit. All right, now kind of added, I'll hold it up so you can see. You can see here as it zoomed in, it really does darken that up a little bit. Probably should color this a little bit more. Didn't quite color that whole roof. I got distracted. And we're gonna color these stripes here in the these towers. All right. Now we're gonna move on to our medium shade, which is R46. And so now we're starting to build a gradation. So I'm going to color at the base of the roof. So I'm going to try to keep the rooftops that light red. So we're just kind of build, making a gradation, just like you would typically do when you're coloring images with Copic markers. Usually make gradations with Copics. That's why Copics are so great for coloring, because they make creating gradations pretty easy. Now I'll try to hold my hand out of the way. It's just, I forget sometimes that I block it when I'm coloring. And it's just feels unnatural <laughs> to hold it so far away. And I definitely got some Copic here on my gold. So I'll show you how to clean that up a little bit. Oh, your German Shepherd Husky is sixth birthday. Happy birthday to your puppy. That's exciting. Today we celebrated my nephew's birthday we had a little birthday in the park little brunch so i just got back from that that was fun kids got to play in fact they're still playing at the park right now grandma and aunties and uncles are watching them today's your birthday gail happy birthday and i am going to grab that medium shade and color right up along the line, right up along that ground line in the scene. Okay. 
Now we're moving on to our dark. Let me hold it up so, it, so you can see. That's what we have so far. Just a little bit of that darker. It's hard to tell. You can probably tell here a little bit more how this part is dark, a little bit darker and it starts to get lighter here. And now we're gonna move on to the darkest shade, which is R59. My mom's birthday is coming up, but we celebrated it a tad earlier, at least gave her her gift a little bit earlier because we went and saw Elton John on Friday. We went to an Elton John concert for my mom's birthday and that was so fun. I've never seen Elton John live before. My mom actually has. So that was a lot of fun to go take her to see that. And he was amazing, guys. I was shocked how amazing he was. I'm now gonna color in this little part here with my dark red, the building. I wanna point that out because I did do that on the original. And I was noticing just now, I was like, that looks a little strange and it's because I didn't color it on this one. But now I did. How old is he? He is 75. He told us how old he was during the live. Yes, this is supposedly his last, his farewell tour, but it is his fifth farewell tour. So we'll see. <laughs> he was so good, Cindy. Yeah, he was really good. I really enjoyed it. You've seen Elton John three times? Awesome. This was my first time seeing him. I was really excited. He was amazing. He had, he, he just seemed to be loving it, you know, like really enjoying himself and him and his band enjoy, you could just tell they enjoyed playing together. It was, it was kind of moving just to see his um, love of, you know, doing a show and playing music. It was moving. I, I felt, I found it moving. I'm also a big baby. I cry all the time. <laughs> All right, so that's, I think I'm done with my dark red. I'm just gonna now blend it out because it's a big jump from um, 46, which was my medium, to 59, my dark. So now I'm just gonna blend it out a tiny bit with my medium. And then we are gonna be on to something else. Well, I'll do a little cleanup and then we'll be on to something else. Cause I, let me move this stuff out of the way. Yes, he always seems to be very true to himself, right? What a I I wish I wish I was so sure. <laughs> I wish that was a quality. I felt so sure of myself to just be myself at all times. But yeah, he's amazing. And his style, his sense of style, I mean. I think a lot of people, I, th I thought about Harry Styles. Um, and I just thought, he, so many people have been inspired by Elton, like just in style wise, obviously music wise, but I think we take for granted that too. All right. I think, do a little blending here, but I think I'm about done with this. Now I got to clean up. I'll point out my how messy I was so you guys know it's okay if you get red on your heat embossed areas. So especially right here, I don't know if the camera can focus on it. it just doesn't like things really close. I got some on the building here. I'm not sure if you can see. There's a little bit there. So I'm going to grab a colorless blender. Right here. And I'm just going to color over those areas with that. And you do need like a scrap piece of paper. So you kind of color over them, kind of pick up that red and then color it onto a scrap. That's how you can kind of clean up anywhere you got some of that Copic ink on your gold heat embossing. 
It's not too bad, though. I don't think most people probably wouldn't even notice it. I think us card makers, us people who colored this, you know, and notice where we got out of line would are the only people who would even see it. So don't stress. Definitely didn't do a great job on that little part right there. Okay, I think. Oh, let's just clean here. All right. Oh, really, Melissa? Oh, what a great costume idea. It never occurred to me until I went to this concert and saw everybody dressed up as Elton for the concert. And I was like, of course, why didn't I think about dressing up? It was awesome. Sometimes I use a barely damp. Oh, that's great tip, Cindy. Great to pick up the ink. And that's it. I got it all cleaned up here. It didn't take very long. Now we're ready to do some ink blending. So I'm gonna grab the lightest shade that I'm using, which is cranberry. We're gonna start there. And I'm gonna just take a blending brush. I'm gonna have a little scrap of cardstock here to kind of, I'm not the best ink blender. I don't know about you guys, but I don't feel super confident. <laughs> so I always need a little scrap piece here to kind of tap off excess. And we're going to ink blend, basically, we, we don't want to blend, ink blend all the way to the golden heat embossing. We want to stop about here. So pretty much about halfway. We want to stop with this crimson. And you know what? Let me get my ink stand. Mother glued feathers on a white jacket and bought, oh my gosh, I bet that was so cute. I bet that was so cute. We dressed up, my daughter's dressed up as uh, um, a witch. <laughs> I don't know why that was so hard for my brain to remember what that was called. And a cat. Black cat and a witch. We kept it pretty simple this year. But that's that was what they wanted to do. I'm just glad they did something different. They typically dress up as what they did the year before. I'll, I'll always say, you know, you don't have to wear the same thing. But they... They, I don't know, <laughs> they like what they had before, I guess. Oh, what that, Gail. I thought he did a great job. I thought he did a great job. I was impressed. All right, we're now moving on to Cranberry. So this is a darker red, and we're gonna go down to about, so take this part that we ink blended, and we're gonna go kind of visually divide up into thirds. So that's the lighter green. Now we're gonna go here for our medium green. Our green, red, 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 red. <laughs> I have no idea why I was calling green. Yes, Gail, I agree. I think he can sing too. So they played when at the concert they played um, clips from that. Um, is it a documentary when it's not real? Okay, the the movie that was about, about about Elton John, and I hadn't watched it, I hadn't seen it, and now after we went to the concert and they played those clips, I really want to see the film. It looked really good. Have any of you guys seen that film about Elton John? It's not a documentary because it's it's. Um, I don't know. It doesn't, <laughs> it seems like it's for entertainment, but it does seem like it has Elton's stamp of approval. All right, now we're moving on to something. Rocket Man, yes, okay, thank you. Now uh, we're moving on to Grape Juice. Saw it, it was interesting. Okay, not raving reviews. All right, well, the clips made it look so good. So I was like, oh, I need to watch this film. We watched, at, at the same time, I think, my husband and I were talking about this, at the same time, 
um, Rocket Man came out, the one about Freddie Mercury came out, and I think we saw Freddie Mer that Freddie Mercury one instead. I guess we, we felt like we could only see one or the other. <laughs> So we are going on to a purple. This is grape juice. And that's because I want to go really, the last color I read, used was crimson. So first, or I'm sorry, I got that wrong. The first color I used was crimson, then cranberry. Now my last color is grape juice. So yes, a purple, a little strange, but that's because, I'll put these here on the side. That's because I wanted a really dark red and even darker than, What's the next one up? Even kind of darker than this grape jam or plum. So I went with purple because the purple over the red is going to make that kind of really dark Merlot kind of color. Yeah, red, the Freddie Mercury one, I did see that and I thought that was really good too. I really enjoyed it. All right. Well, I'm kind of bummed that maybe I'll still watch um, Rocket Man, but I'm bummed it wasn't great. All right, that's all we're going to do for that grape juice. See how much that makes it dark? Wow, so dramatic. And I think I'm going to go back over with a little bit more cranberry. I think I maybe was a little bit more heavy-handed this time with that. I used crimson first, ink blended down to here in crimson. Then I ink blended in cranberry from like here down and then the last bit that top part where it's dark is grape juice so i used all three colors for the sky now i'm going to go back to cranberry and just ink blend a little bit more just because i feel like this transition to this is a little harsh yes exactly cynthia the band was so amazing i agree the band was so amazing And then I'll finish up with a tiny bit more of crimson, which is my lightest red for this ombre sky. Probably, you could probably get away with just cranberry and no crimson. I'm gonna add a little bit of this crimson. Great, and that's it, Dunsies. Then I'll wipe down because I got a little bit of that crimson on the gold there on the buildings. Okay, that's our sky. Very dramatic. We want it nice and dark because we do want that Santa sleigh and that trail of stars to pop up against it. So it's nice when it's a little bit darker like that, it'll really pop. All right, I did make a mess here, so let's clean it up with a smidge. I'll clean it up better with the, um, the Hero Arts Ultra Clean later. I should have put something underneath, but I was excited. Okay, so now we're going to do something that I learned that's new and cool. We're going to add some gold stars in our sky, and I'm going to use, whoops, the hero wax to do that. I just is something I just learned that you could do and it's so cool. It's basically gonna work. You can water this down and it's basically gonna work like a gold um, watercolor. And you don't need very much either. I'm gonna grab my paintbrush. And just grab a tiny bit like, can you see how much is on that brush? Not much at all. I'm gonna put it down there and then I'll grab a little bit of water. Spray it to the side here so I can kind of incorporate small amounts at a time because it doesn't take a lot of water to get this kind of runny and, and um, liquidy. So I just had added a tiny bit of water. You can see already it's starting to get liquidy. A little bit more. Just dipping my brush in the water I sprayed down onto the acetate. And mixing it in with that gold hero wax. 
I hope no one else is having a bad connection. Hello, Donna. I, I don't see lag on my end this time. I've been, I re, like I said before, I, um, we've had our Cox guy come out here and check out our connection. And I think we got it figured out. So no more lag. So I apologize for the other make alongs that you guys may have <laughs> endured, maybe not endured, maybe left, which I get because they were, the lag was so bad. All right, I think that's ready to go. Nice and runny. Could you do this with the gold hero pearls? I haven't tried that yet, Sandy. I haven't tried it. Um, I'm just worried. I didn't try it, so I'm not sure. Water-based. Okay, so it's water-based, so I think you could. Yes, I bet you could. You know what? We can try it right here, Sandy. I'll try it right now for you. I'll do it. Oops, that was probably too much. I'm well, we're gonna that's what we that's how much I scored it out. So that's, <laughs> that's just what it is. All right, I'm gonna clean my brush off a little bit. So I still have water here on my acetate, so I'm gonna pick it up and add it. I know it works with the wax, I've already tried it, but let's try it with the whoops the um, Hero Pearls. Oh, it's windy there, maybe. Just add some more water till I feel it's the right consistency. Kind of like thicker, hmm, what would I describe this as? Like half and half, maybe? Half and half consistency? creamy but not super runny that looks good i think that's good so i'm going to splatter it on here i'm going to hold my hand kind of over here you could also maybe i'll just use a piece of paper you can also just use a scrap i don't really want my snow down here just because it busies this scene which we're going to fill with a bunch of stuff so i'm going to cover that up with a scrap and we'll start splattering oh yeah that works Look at how cool, oh my gosh, beautiful. So both works. I love that, that's so versatile. And it's such a beautiful, pretty yellow, like a really pretty yellowy gold. Sometimes gold can be more, a little bit more bronzy than I want it to be. And both these yellows, the um, the Hero Arts wax, gold wax in this uh, pearls are really pretty yellow color. All right, I'm gonna move it down just a bit and get a little bit more snow down here, but I just don't want it on the, gr like at the ground, whoops. All right, look at that beautiful snowy sky. Oh, it's so pretty, it looks so magical. And this will just come off, it's water-based, so it'll just wipe off. Let me put my, close my wax up. Yeah, it thinned out nice, Cindy, it works great too, so either one will work, either one will work. That's cool. I'm, I'm excited about that discovery. <laughs> it goes to show you, I need to play more around with my supplies. All right, I'm going to put this aside while this dries, and we're going to stamp all of our other parts of our scene. So our Santa sleigh, our trail of stars, our sentiment, this little house scene here, the deer, the elf, and this bow, all these, like, evergreen branches or greenery. No problem, Lori. I'm, I, it's, I'm happy to have discovered it too. <laughs> I love it when things have multiple purpose, you can use them multiple ways. 
and splatters are something I use all the time. I do a lot of splattering. All right, so I'm going to grab another panel of cherry cardstock. And I'm going to grab all my images. Hello, Richard. How are you? Let's see. He just, this guy right here doesn't quite fit. So I'm going to turn it on its side and we'll trim it down. I just think that will be, to me, that feels easier. So that's what I'm going to do. Our little house. We have our sleigh and our stars. Hello. Isn't it a beautiful color? And there are dies for like everything in this die set, except for our trail of stars. <laughs> but everything else has a die. Oh, this, this deer, oh no. I did this deer. There is actually a, an image of a deer and a, a little, I think that's Santa though. See, I can't, I can't have two Santas. <laughs> that's why I had to do this, this deer and this elf. Right? That's the one I used. Okay, I'm just making room here for everything. Is there anything I missed? House, deer, boughs. Let's see if I count everything. Oh, sentiment. Tis the season. Yeah, splatters. Exactly, Sydney. Sometimes splatters just add that little bit of thing that your car needed. No, I used the one I used, yeah, I used this guy here and this deer and I put them together. It looks similar to this, but I didn't do that one. You could definitely do this if you if you wanted to, but I thought that guy looked like Santa and I already had Santa in the sky. So <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't do it. I had to do the other one. All right, there we go. We got everything there. Yeah, I use the elf, not the sand. I use the elf. I think my sleigh might be a little too close to my... I'm going to move these things around a little bit. I just think my stamps are a little too close for the dies. All right, that's got to be plenty of room. All right, splatter everything. I agree. Splatter everything. Splattering is easy too. Like, unlike ink blending, which can kind of, like I said in the beginning, can, I'm not the best ink blender. So ink blending can be a little tricky sometimes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to add some antiseptic powder. And we are going to do a ton of gold heat embossing. So I'm going to add tons of powder. Really cover that whole panel. And we're going to ink up all of these images. And we're in splatter season here with Christmas, with winter. You get to, that's, that's your snow. Your easy snow. But I'll often add splatters to the back of, to, behind florals. It's a great way to, great kind of filler for or adding some interest but not taking away from your flowers or your focal point it could be something else all right i think i got those fairly inked okay we're gonna stamp them nice let's stamp them again just to make sure, even though I think I did a pretty good job. Allergens in the air. This is the one time I'm not sneezy. <laughs> I was watching back some of my other lives and I'm like, I swear I sneeze every live I do. <laughs> but I'm not sneezy today. 
I think maybe I have a problem with allergies. All right, that is done. Those look like they stamped beautifully. Oh, splatter in the spring. <laughs> That's hilarious, Cindy. Yes, we have, we'll do splattering in the spring for all the allergies in the air. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't hear, I didn't get that. That's hilarious. That's a good point. All right, dip it into our clear, our gold embossing powder. Oh, that, everything's stamped beautifully. I love that. Now I'm just going to heat set, so I'm going to turn my heat gun on. All right, that stamped and heat embossed beautifully. I know, I, I was just gonna say that, Lori. Don't you love heat embossing? It never gets old. I love it. It was definitely something that, you know, was like my gateway into card making. <laughs> that and embossing folders, they're just so cool. They're so easy and so cool. You're like, whoa, it's like magic. All right, now it's time for me to find the matching dies. We got our tis the season. There's so many in this kit, it's awesome. And this, nope. There's our deer. Here's our little elf guy. I should tape these. I mean, I will, but I should probably tape them now while I'm already spending some time getting them lined up. I'm using micropore tape. It's something I saw Jennifer McGuire use a hundred years ago. So I bought a bunch and I'm still working my way through it, but it works great. I don't have any problems with micropore tape. I mean, it sometimes sticks, um, but I, to be honest, I've tried other tapes besides this and every tape I use sticks a little bit to the cardstock sometimes. It just kind of depends on how much pressure you're putting on your, when you run your sandwich through like, are you using really thick cardstock? That's what I found. Like the more pressure, the more likely your tape's going to stick. Even with low tack tapes. But maybe somebody has bought, maybe there's someone else on the market that's made one that's better. That's been my experience. All right, we're almost there. All right, and then this is the last thing I'm gonna do. I cut out the the um, stars. I'll have to fussy cut out, but they're easy to cut, so no big deal. Here it is. All right, let's cut these out.
They look like they cut out beautifully. We do have a little bit of coloring we're gonna do on this house. So we have a little bit of more Copic coloring. It's micro pore tape. I'll show you the tape. It's by 3M. Can you see in there? Micro pore. So it's like a medical tape. What I really like about it is that it's kind of matte. Like it's not, it's the surface is dry. So if I do stamp on it, I'm less likely to like run my finger over and get ink all over me. I can still get some, it's not completely um, porous, but because it's a little bit more dry, like it's made of fibers, I like that. Cause sometimes I'll use it for ink blending. So if I get ink on here or stamp on here, um, it'll kind of uh, s absorb into the fibers a little bit more. And it's see-through. That's what also I like too, that I can see through it. It's not completely transparent, but you can definitely see well enough. Yeah, I bought a bunch of it on Amazon one time and I think it was a case of 12. So I'm still working my way through it. <laughs> and as you can see by how discolored, I, I use a piece, a little scrap for quite a while until it completely loses its stick. All right, so obviously this die only cuts out the top and the sides. So this last bit I'm gonna cut out, I think with my paper trimmer is what I'm gonna do. Just cut this here and we'll fussy cut that. But we're on home stretch here, believe it or not. We have a little bit of Copic coloring to do. And then we just kind of mount everything to the card base. Copic coloring, a little bit of trimming, and then we're mounting that to the card base. Uh, where's my small paper trimmer? <laughs> Oops, knocked over my water bottle. Oh, we're getting there, we're almost there. It's so nice right now here in Arizona. So we've been out a lot. So a farmer's market sounds um, like an amazing thing to do. We were just at the park today. It's finally nice weather. <laughs> Let's see if I can get this lined up. I'm gonna tape it down because I'm having a hard time. There we go. There we go. Home stretch, exactly. And I noticed I didn't probably line up my die as well as I'd like, so I'm just gonna fussy cut that part off just cause that'll bug me. All right, and let's cut out these stars. So I'm gonna kind of employ the same tactics I do when I typically fussy cut out a sentiment. Just kind of follow along, but add in a little extra little bumps if you can. <laughs> For some reason it just works. So if you kind of can make it a little bumpy, try not to just cut it like a, try not to cut it like, see if I can show you, like a swoop like that. That's where it doesn't look so great. See how much nicer it looks there where it's a little bit bumpy falling along. Even if you don't make the bumps right, totally in the right spot, I promise you it'll look more like it was die cut if you can put a little of those little bumps in there. So there it is. That looks so much better, right? And this could
could have maybe been stamped onto the um, our background panel and then do your gold splatterings. But I was afraid I'd lose I'd lose it. Like you wouldn't see it once I did the gold splatterings and I knew I wanted to do the gold splatters. I knew that was definitely something I wanted to do. But by cutting this out, you will definitely get this to pop because it'll have that border of the unblended, you know, natural cherry cardstock that'll just help your eye to see it better. And almost done here. Okay. So we've got our stars. Now we're gonna do a tiny bit of coloring. Let's make sure I didn't lose anything. This is this is gonna be where I'd lose. Did I lose an elf? Oh good. I didn't I almost lost him. There he is. <laughs> gonna do a make sure we have all our stuff. Quickly color this roof here, same way we colored the scene earlier. Start with my light red, which is R27, and color the whole roof with this light red. At least the lightest red marker that I'm using. Did I color that part too? I'm looking back. Yeah, we'll color that too, but we'll wait. Okay, once we color with that, we'll do our medium, which is R46. Kind of start to create a gradation. We'll leave the upper third that light red, that R27. And let's see, I'm gonna hold up to the camera, but I'm not sure you'll see that this is a little bit lighter than the rest of it. And then I'll finish up with R59. Color that bottom third and even up into that little, if you imagine this divide, it's divided three, I colored into this little part too, that little section. Now I'm gonna take this red, this really dark red and color, see if I can point it out, here and here. It just kind of will make the building seem more together, more all together. And now I'm going to grab that medium shade, just blend out a little bit on this roof. And now I got to do a little bit of cleanup. So I'm going to grab my scrap cardstock, grab my color blender, and I'm just going to clean up where I got some of that red. Um, Copic marker onto the gold. Just kind of color. And once you pick it up with the marker, transfer that red ink to your scrap paper. Does a great job. All right. And there's our little house color. Now we can put this all together. Hello, hello Gwen. We're about ready to wrap this up. Some of the splatters are a little tacky. I'm gonna just try to be careful. Hey, no, sorry, my cat's tearing up my couch. <laughs> Let me grab some liquid glue. We're gonna glue that card base onto our, glue that panel onto our card base. Thank you, I, I, I love red and gold together. They're so pretty, right? And it always feels like Christmas, red and gold. That combo just always feels so Christmassy to me. Stick this down. 
do my best not to I'm gonna grab my cloth here that's what I'll do put my cloth over press yeah I know bad kitty I love her though <laughs> I love her but she's trying to tear up my couch she doesn't normally do that so I'm surprised of course, we've got a scratching post for her and everything, but she has, does she use it? No, 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 no. I don't know, do your cats, does that seem to work? <laughs> I'm gonna blend this out a tiny bit with my light red, just gonna add a little bit of it here. And then a little bit, my color's blender. All right, ooh, it's windy outside. All right, we're going to add some foam adhesive. Kind of pop these things up. So grab my foam adhesive. We're going to go foam adhesive crazy. Everything, uh, everything gets foam adhesive. <laughs> I probably should get um, a different kind now that I'm thinking about it. One that would be more strip-like. So that would be probably a better foam adhesive. Wrapping post with leather. You know what? That's a good tip because I think she prefers leather. Like she prefers that kind of, she doesn't like ropey stuff, you know, she, and that's what all scratching posts are like rope. And I know she likes leather cause she tore up a leather um, chair once. All right, we're gonna start with these two. I think this comes in contact. Okay, so this is the this is overlapping. We have a sentiment that overlaps, so that's something you have to be mindful. And I messed up. I need to take trim this foam down. Just because if you have that, their foam adhesive is kind of overlapping each other, and that makes it not work. Okay, so now that works. So I'm gonna stick these down. Carpet post, yeah. My cats just destroyed my ottoman, yep. But left their scratch, <laughs> exactly, Gwen, exactly, exactly. I think our, our cat, our little cat's boat, boat scratcher is just decoration for our house. It's not, it's not for my cats. All right, tuck him in behind like so, boom. It's like growing, the scene is getting richer. I love it. Now we have our deer and elf. They go in here too. I think this was over. Well, we're leaving, it's stuck there. It's stuck now. gonna put one piece on him like that we'll stick him down this is definitely a little different than how I made the original <laughs> but I'm like things aren't fitting that's all right we'll get it in there I have this little piece that I cut off the other one I should use I'll use it here on Santa's sleigh for now and we'll have this little piece. I think it's just a little too big for my elf. He's super tiny. Thank you, Bonnie. No worries. This will be saved, I believe. I'm thinking, oh, do I know how to do that? <laughs> Libby is enjoying the afternoon, evening with her fam. So hopefully I can figure that all out. All right, we squeezed him in there. He got in there. Phew. A little different, but it's still good. All right, on to the, let's do, you can totally add foam adhesive to the backside of your sleigh and your stars. Nothing comes in contact. The sentiment will come in contact with the stars, but 
it's over the star, so we'll worry about that later. Let's see. That is a little too big. And there's no reason you'd have to put these dimension on this. Um, it's, it's totally extra. But I think you'd still have plenty of contrast if you didn't lift. If you didn't use the dimension as a way to kind of lift and create that contrast. Because it creates contrast by creating little shadows. But because we have the ink blending and the coloring the Copics. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You could make this a one layer card almost, you know, just except for gluing things down. And I think it would be awesome. Because I know the, that dimension, though it's fun and pretty, it does make it harder to mail. Do you like that? Thank you, Carol. This is a fun one. It's easy to make. Pretty easy to make. There's a lot, maybe a lot of little, little steps, but overall it's pretty easy. And I think what would be fun is to see this in different colors. Um, Michelle suggested gold, and I agree that would be, I'm not gold, purple. And I didn't even think about that. That would be beautiful in purple. But blue would be a pretty, a pretty um, background, of course. It would feel more wintry and frosty. Also, um, green, I think, would be really pretty, too. Green and gold. All right, we're done with that. I can't get it off. I love that trail of stars. So cute. And then the sentiment, I want to overlap the stars just a bit. The tiz part. So I'm just going to avoid putting some foam adhesive up there on that tiz. I'll just put it down in this, where it says season. Oh, good, Gail. I'm glad you made a card. I agree, Rosie. Silhouette, silhouette cards can be, uh, kits can be kind of challenging just because um, you feel like you have to stamp the scenes always in black, right? So it's kind of like, well, what else can I do? So that's why I should show you, I don't know, did you guys see the card that I made for the, um, I made a video for? I did some no-line coloring with this kit, and it wasn't that hard to do. I did it this little house here and I did some no line coloring. And it's pretty much a solid solid stamp, right? But which and that that why it's a silhouette set cuz those more solid stamps you want to stamp in black, right? And have a silhouette. But that one turned out so good. I was so proud of how that card turned out. Maybe I can go grab it real quick. I got to find it. That's straight? No, definitely not straight. Very, very not straight. Okay, let's try again. Boom. Oh. oh, it's so fun. That purple, I mean, that gold and red is so magical. I love it. Let me see if I can find that other card I made. I know you've seen it already, Rosie, though. Here it is. I found it. I found it. I should have two of them too. So here's another card I created. I, I have a whole YouTube video on Hero Arts, a blog post and YouTube video on this card where I took this same image here and then Copic colored it. And it wasn't, I know this, I know no line color. It intimidates me. No line coloring intimidates me too. But it, it was not hard to do. It was easy to do. It wasn't bad. So definitely check that out. 
But that's another great way to use these more um, silhouette style stamps. All right. I we are done. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'll pop the camera back to my face and sign out for today. Figure. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much for spending your Sunday with me creating this card. I hope it gave you some ideas of how to use the October kit and maybe try some other color palettes would be really fun. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and I will see you in another live. Bye everyone.